So today we are going to discuss card feed region. The objectives of the card feed region is to ensure uniform feeding of the lab or the fibrous mat to the carding zone to transform large tufts into small tufflets and to extract impurities or neps still left in the lab or the tufts. Now, the feed system to the carding machine could be two types, lab feed system and continuous or chewed feed system. The lab feed system is depicted in the figure. Now, what we see here is that it consists of a lab roller a feed plate a feed roller and the lab is resting on the lab roller now lab is basically a sheet of tufts which is rolled into the form of a cylinder the lab rest on the lab roller which is usually made of wood and the lab roller gets its drive from some source. So, as the lab roller rotates the lab which is resting on it will be also turning and the lab will be unrolled. The lab being very flimsy it has to be supported before it reaches the liquor in which is here and hence the feed plate exists which acts as a support. The lab moves over the feed plate because it is being pushed or unrolled by the lab roller and then it comes in between the feed roller and the feed plate. The feed roller is positively driven and hence the frictional grip of the feed roller on the lab sheet will pull the lab and the lab will move forward and will be presented to the liquor in which is turning at high speed. The typical lab weight can vary between 500 to 800 gram per meter. The lab roller diameter could be around 15 centimeter. The feed roller is around 6 centimeter and the liquor in diameter is typically 23 centimeter. The liquor in speed could be 800 to 1200 rpm. In modern machines, it can go up to 1600 rpm. Now, the advantage of lab feed system there is a greater control that can be exercised on the regularity of the feed as production of uniform lab sheet in sketcher is relatively easy. The next point is the system is flexible that is different material can be processed on different cards as the cards are not linked together to a common supply of fibers. Now, let us analyze the feed system. Now, here is a diagram where we see that the plate is represented by this rectangle, the feed roller is here and in between we have the mat of fibers. Now, let the feed roller is pressed on the feed plate by a force P or the P is a normal force. The frictional force F 1 is acting on the top surface of the lab and the feed roller and F 2 is the frictional force acting in between bottom surface of the lab sheet and the feed plate. That will lap sheet is experiencing a frictional force from the feed roller surface and also a frictional force from the stationary feed plate. Now, against these frictional forces, the lab has to move forward. Let mu r is the coefficient of friction between the feed roller and the lab and the mu p is the coefficient of friction between the feed plate and the lab. Now, under steady state conditions we can write the following equations. 
that is f1 will be mu r into p and f2 is mu t into f. Now, the condition for uniform feeding is f1 has to be greater than f2 and therefore, we can write that mu r p has to be greater than mu a p. Since p is the normal force which is constant, we can eliminate them and we can write that mu r should be greater than mu a p. This is the conditions that is the frictional coefficient between the feed roller and the feed plate must be more than the feed plate and the lap sheet. Now, in order to increase this uh, friction, the feed roller surface is usually grouped, whereas the fleet plate top surface is very, very smooth because we have to reduce that friction. Now, we will look at the geometry of the feed plate. This region of the feed plate is very, very important since the teasing of the lab very much depends on this geometry. Now, the you can see that the feed plate which is rectangular plate, the front face of the feed plate is little inclined forward toward the ligarine. So, that an waste say, space is created between the front face of the feed plate and the liquidine oil points. Now, from the geometry of this region, we can write that let A be the length of the horizontal plateau, which is from A to B. B is the length of the front guiding surface. Beta is the inclination angle of the, inclination angle of the guiding surface shown in the diagram. So, B is from here to there, beta is this angle and A is A B. L and L M be the staple length and the modal fiber length and let D be the thickness of the lap. Now, we can write that A B C D, this whole region, the length of A B C D should be equal to length of the fiber by 4, which is 25 percent of the fiber length for efficient uh, opening of the lap. The region A E, which is should be equal to A plus B and this part should be equal to L M, or L M is the modal fiber length. A B C D, this part can be written as a plus 2 pi d 90 degree minus beta by 360 plus c d. If you look at the geometry of this region, so a b c d has the part a plus the length c d and this region b c the arc b c and the arc b c is shown by this equation 2 pi d 90 minus beta by 360. Now, from here when you go to the next page, we see the same equation, we can write that A plus 2 pi d 90 degree minus beta by 360 plus C d should be equal to L by 4. And this can be simplified and the steps are shown here and if we go through these steps, we arrive at the value of the angle beta. And what we see here, the beta is 180 by pi d within bracket a plus pi d by 2 plus c d minus l by 4. Now, if c d is considered to be 0, that is from here to there in case, then beta happens to be 180 by pi d a plus pi d by 2 minus l by 4. As an example, if d is 3 millimeter, the thickness of the lab, the length of the fiber is 30 mm. In that case, beta has to be around 18 degree, that is the inclination angle of the front face 
and in the case if d is 3 millimeter and the length of the fiber is 32 mm then beta has to be equal to 0. Therefore, fit table configuration must be changed with the length of fiber. For long fibers it may be necessary to shift the point of entry of the liquid in teeth into the lap further in order to increase the distance C D. Now, after going through this analysis, we can conclude that there is a possibility of differential combing of the lap sheet. <coughs> the length of the top layer of the lap which is exposed to liquid in action is given by this equation. By this equation, length of the bottom layer exposed to liquid in action is also shown by this equation. Now, if we see these two compare, then we see that because A plus B is greater than this, and hence we can conclude that fibers belonging to top layers are subjected to more number of revolutions of the ligarin than the fibers situated at the bottom layer. Thus, fibers will receive differential treatment by the ligarin teeth depending upon their location in the lab. And for very thick lap, the bottom layer may not get combed at all or teased at all. Hence, there is a limit to the thickness of the lap that we can produce on blow room line. Too thick a lap will mean that the tufts which are there in the bottom part of the lap will never get combed properly or never get teased out properly by the ligarin teeth and hence they will move as it is and therefore, our teasing action, the opening actions or the cleaning actions will be affected if the lap sheet is made too thick. Hence, there is a limitation to the maximum thickness of the lap sheet that we can produce. Okay. From here, we go to this slide where we are showing you the front face of the lap, front not the lap, the front face of the feed plate. And there are two types, long nose type and short nose type. Now, long nose type, this part, the front face is suitable for long length fibers, whereas the short nose type which are available suitable for medium or short length fibers. Hence, uh, whenever we want to switch over from short or medium length fibers to long length fibers, we need to change the feed plate. The same feed plate if we use, then there could be a problem with the processing of the fibers. In the new designs, there are some changes in the design of this feed plate. Now, here the problem with the older design is that lap is presented against the direction of rotation of the liquid in teeth and therefore, the fibers bend and are subjected to very high level of stress because they have to follow the curvature which is changing of the feed plate and hence lot of stress will be acting on them and hence many fibers are damaged. To avoid such high level of stress on fiber during feeding, sharp bend of fiber is to be avoided, especially if we want to process the fibers at high speed. In the new design, therefore, the directional rotations of the liquid in teeth and the feeding direction of the lap sheet is exactly similar. And this is what has been shown in this diagram. If you look at this, that the lap which is being fed from here, they are actually the lap will be moving over 
the feed roller and the feed plate is placed not at the bottom of the feed roll, but on the top and hence the lap is squeezed in between the feed plate and the lap roller in between these gap and then they are following the curvature of the feed roller and then they are approaching the liquor in. And therefore, if we look at the line of actions of liquor in teeth and the feeding directions of the lap sheet, then we will see that at this point they are actually moving in the same directions and hence the level of stress will be little less in this case. So, that is the advantage of the new designs and therefore, in all modern cutting machines the lap feeding system has been changed to this new type of feeding arrangement. Now, from here we move to continuous feed. The earlier one was lap feed system. That is, we used to produce lap on the blow room line and then these laps needs to be transported to the carding machines and then we used to feed them to the carding machines. So, this is basically a, a discontinuous operations. Now, in the continuous operations, the lap formation part of the blown room no more exist. The blown room is connected directly to the carding machines and therefore, the whole process of opening cleaning till carding become continuous and hence we call it continuous feed system. So, this is also known as chute feed system. In chute feed system, several cards are fed simultaneously by a single source of material that is the blow room. There is a central distribution system that feeds stuffed to several vertical chutes connected to a set of cards. Depending upon the production rate of the blow room, 6 to 10 cards are connected to the distribution system because typically a blow room line may be producing at the rate of 500 to 700 kilo per hour and if a card produces between 50 to 60 kg per hour, then one blow room line will be able to feed 6 to 10 carding machines. And here in this slide we see that the material is coming from the blow room and then here there is a distribution duct and this distribution duct which is here is connected to card 1 to card 2 to card 3 and goes up to card n which may be either 10 cars or 8 cars or 9 cars whatever it is and from this duct the taps will fall into the chute number 1 connected to card 1, it will also fall to chute number 2 connected to the card 2 and so forth so on, it will go up to the chute number n connected to card n. So, the material from the blow room, the small tufts which you generate there, they will be moving along this duct and will be gradually falling into the chutes and the chutes will get filled up with time and these vertical chutes which are connected to the blue or the carding machines will now feed the material to the carding machine. Now, chute also could be of two types, one is single piece chute without any opening system within them and that could be a double piece chute with an opening system inbuilt. Now, double piece chutes are more common nowadays. The single push chute is shown in this diagram, previous diagram. Now, what we see here that there is a vertical chamber connected to the carding machine. So, we see here that vertical chamber here and then the column of material or tufts with variable heights is maintained within this chamber 
and then there is a delivery roller at the bottom. Delivery roller will be now delivered this accumulation of taps within this chamber, which is connected to the carding machine. So, this uh, system is very simple and there is no additional opening or cleaning unit within this. The material is directly fed to the carding machines. And I go to the next that is double piece chute. Then we see here that in the double piece chute there is one column of material at the top through which this material from the blow loom line is falling into this chute and from there as the material accumulates they are delivered to a small beater and the beater has got some teeth on its surface and it will be able to open the top little bit and all those tops will now fall into the bottom chute. So, basically there are two chutes one at the top and one at the bottom and in between there is a small beater and this beater is going to further open or break the tops. Now, at the, at the tops falls here in this chute there is a air escaping route that is the tops are conveyed from the blow room to the chute by air and therefore, when the air and the tops enter this chute the air has to escape and therefore, on the one side of the chute there will be a lot of perforations through which the air will escape and a column of material will be accumulating on the top chute. Similarly, as it comes to the bottom again the tops are falling into this chute and here with time a column of material will be built and this color material is now pressurized by an air. So, that a little compression we create on the tops and now these tops will be now delivered by this set of rollers and it will now go to the or it will reach the feed roller of the carding machines and then from the feed rollers the tops will be now fed to the liquorine. So, this is how the double piece chute is going to work and double piece chutes are more common nowadays. So, between these two types of feeding if we try to understand what are the advantage or disadvantages of the continuous feed system versus lab feed systems. Now, disadvantages with lab feed systems are written here what we see here is this that the very purpose of breaking tops in the blow room is defeated by transforming well open tops into compressed sheet or lab. That is in the blow room we open the tops we make them smaller and smaller, but in order to form a lab what we do that we bring all those tops together and transform them into a very compressed sheet which we call lab. So, the very purpose of opening is defeated because of the compressions that the fibers are going to receive at the time of lab formations. Second thing is whenever a lab runs out in a carding machine a new lab needs to be introduced. The last portion of the running lab and the beginning of the new lab are joined together manually which becomes a source of fault in sliver and it also generate waste. So, because one lab get exhausted the new lab we have to bring and then we have to join these two ends and when you do that there will be some thickness variations and therefore, as the material passes through the machines the sliver that will be produced will also show some thickness variations. The lab needs to be transported manually from blow room to card room. So, in this transportation process some labs might get damaged. We have to have space to store the labs 
we need additional space. These are some of the disadvantages of the lab pit system and therefore, we are trying to get rid of this system in the modern uh, mills. Now, disadvantages with the continuous feed system is that the lack of flexibility. Since 8 to 10 cars are fed simultaneously by the same material supplied by the blow room. And hence, if I want to use 4 or 5 cars, the rest of the cars remains idle. So, that is the, the disadvantage in the continuous feed system. I have to make use of all the carding machines which are connected to a single broom line all the time. Otherwise, some of the machines will remain idle if the lot size is small. Then generation of recoverable waste due to running out of the system when changing from one stock to another. Lot of reworkable waste is generated and difficulty in ensuring even feed leading to medium to long term sliver mass variations. That is one of the serious problem with the continuous feed system that the saliva that we produce will have long term variations in mass because the feed material is not as uniform as a lab otherwise would be and hence to make the system commercially successful the machine manufacturers have developed auto levelers which are connected to most of the modern carding machines. So, the deficiency of the uh, continuous feed system is overcome by having the auto levelers connected to most of the modern carding machines. Now, we will discuss about the liquorin or the tecanin region. Now, here is a diagram which shows the liquorin region. Now, the purpose of the liquorin or the tecanin, their names are interchangeable. You will find that in some textbooks they are mentioned as liquorin, in some textbooks they are mentioned as tecanin it means the same. So, in the diagram we can see the liquorine here. The purpose of the liquorine or the tecarine is to tear apart the lap into minute tufts without damaging the fibers. To lead the tufts on dirt eliminating parts for elimination of trash particles, short fibers etcetera and to transfer the fibers to cylinder surface. So, the purpose of the liquorine are mainly to tear apart. So, that small tufts, we call them tuplets, are fed to the cylinder where the maximum separation of fibers is going to take place. Liquorine is typically has a diameter of 10 inch, it is a cylindrical and there are large number of wire points or pins on its surface. It rotates at a speed in 800 to 1600 rpm and its surface speed could be 16 meters per second or more and that could be almost 600,000 wire points that will pass through the lab fringe per second when the Lecardine rotates. And therefore, each ligandine teeth will tease out minute tufts from the lap sheet or from the feed mat and they are then passed over two important elements which are there at the bottom of the liquorine, they are known as mode knives and carding uh, mode knives and some associated bars. Now, what happens 
is this that the trash particles which are there in the tufts they are teased out and the trash particles being heavy in nature they are thrown away and they accumulate in the trash boxes shown in the diagram because the centrifugal force these trash particles will be thrown away and as the fibers will be passed over the the grid bars which are there the another diagram shows the liquid in under casing part where we see there is a uh, moat knife and these are the grid bars so as to as the fibers or the small tufts move over them the tufts will experience some kind of friction between the moat knives and the grid bar surface so because of this friction also the trash particles which are still there on the surface of the tuft will be removed and most of these trash particles will now fall due to gravity actions below the liquorine and this below the liquorine the, this part is completely enclosed and we allow the particles to fall down here and accumulate there now when the trash particles are falling not necessarily only the trash particles will fall there are some fibers which are may also fall therefore the liquorine west that we generate below the liquorine will contain both lint and trash particle shown in the diagram so there is the lint part and there is a trash part and generally we see that the ratio between lint and trash is typically 50-50. So, the purpose of liquorine is to basically open the tufts further and create minute tufflets typical weight of those tufflets could be between 1 to 2 milligram there could be some fibers which will be almost at the single fiber stage and all these minute tufflets will now move towards the cylinder and they will be picked up by the cylinder. The top surface of the liquorine if you see the diagram there is a plate or a cover this is to protect the, uh, the, the liquorine or to protect the persons who are working there and, uh, and this part is always covered. The intensity of the opening by the liquorine is extremely important because uh, by increasing or decreasing the opening we will be able to extract more trash or less trash but there is always a danger that if we increase the opening intensity there is a chance that many fibers may get damaged. So therefore we have to uh, balance or we have to optimize the speed so that we extract trash particles but we have to ensure that the fibers also do not get damaged. So some balance has to be uh, has to be there. Now the intensity can be changed by adjusting following parameters. One is the lap linear density or the thickness of the lap. Second thing is degree of openness of the tufts in lap, degree of orientation of fibers in the lap. The Ligurian parameters is the oil point density, the angle of the inclination of the liquid in teeth and the speed of the liquid in. The third parameter important parameter is the setting that is the distance between the liquid in and the feed plate at the closest approach. The other thing is the speed of the liquid in as mentioned earlier and the material throughput rate that is at what speed I am feeding the material at how much material I am feeding per unit time. Hence, these are the 
important three parameters feed material, the liquid in itself and the process parameters through which we will be able to change the intensity of the opening actions. So, depending upon the nature of fiber, whether they are short or medium or long, how much trash is there, we have to adjust the intensity of the opening. And there are certain norms in the industry and generally in the industry, these norms will be followed in order to ensure that sufficient cleaning takes place without damaging the fibers too much. Thank you.